what we're going to be going over here is governmental accounting for inventories here and we're going to be looking at purchasing inventories using this encumbrance system and we're going to really be concentrating setting up the fund balance reserves to match our inventories accounts here and setting aside funds to match any inventories that we have okay so let's go in and let's look at we're going, what we're going to be doing here so i'm going to first go through these different accounts here and we've got them i've got them shown here in t account form here so and you'll see how they all fit in here so what we're going to do here we're going to start with this un, and we're going to be looking at the general fund here this is where we're going to have an unreserved fund balance undesignated fund balance that we're going to have and along with that we're going to for the encumbrance system here you have to set up an encumbrance control account for your estimated expenditures it's a contract account to the unreserved fund balance undesignated fund balance and along with your encumbrance control account you're going to have a fund balance reserved for these encumbrances these encumbrances are going to be like our purchase orders for uh, different inventory supplies and then along with these this inventory account here you're going to have a fund balance reserved for inventory so you're going to have several different fund balance reserved accounts here and then you're going to also have this unreserved undesignated fund balance account we're going to see how they all fit in here now i want to point out here this unbalanced fund balance reserve for inventories that would be a fund balance reserved account this is where you need it for funds that cannot be converted into cash in the current period and that would be like our inventory account now let's move down here and look at our other accounts okay so we're going to have our inventory supplies account our asset account here where we carry our inventory and then for this example we're going to have our purchases here we're going to set them up as payables here a vouchers payable for purchases of that inventory and then finally we're going to have an expenditures control or our inventory expense account here Okay, so let's really start with our inventory here of supplies and look at really our beginning balances and see how those are tied into our reserve accounts here. So let's just say for the beginning balance here, we have $31,000 worth of inventory supplies on hand. Debit amount here for $31,000. Now let's go back and let's look at our fund balance reserve for inventories. Now this is, again, our this a reserved account here fund balance is reserved for inventories that has to match our inventory supplies account so uh, the beginning balance we have a credit here of 31,000 remember inventory supplies we have 31,000 debit amount on hand so here we got to set aside fund balance reserve for those inventories here at 31,000 now along with that fund balance reserve account here uh, we're going to have an unreserved fund balance an undesignated fund balance this is for our general fund balance here for the general fund account and this is the case here we had our fund balance reserve over here uh, for those beginning inventories at 31,000 a credit amount here well our unreserved fund balance undesignated fund balance has to have a debit or a reduction here you, it's si funds that were set aside here uh, uh, for those inventories that we have so debit or decrease our unreserved fund balance by 31,000 that's for the beginning inventory balances okay we'll look at how these tie it together here uh, in detail a little later here but uh, just starting with that beginning inventory balance how we have to set up our fund balance reserve for the inventories and also this unreserved fund balance okay so now we're going to add a little into our problem here say we had some unreserved uh, fund balances that were care or we had set aside eighteen thousand dollars worth of purchase orders from the last period here and we uh that we had and we want to reinstate those purchase orders that is we want to set them up as an as an, a future expenditure here in our budget for this year so we're going to take whatever we set aside here of unreserved fund balance for the prior period encumbrance we're going to restate it or we're going to restore it here so what we would do here we're going to take the debit amount unreserved amount of eighteen thousand we're going to credit it here for eighteen thousand these are for purchase orders that we're going to issue here for the uh, current year this was a carryover or set aside from the previous year now we're going to actually be issuing those purchase orders based on our budget so credit our unreserved fund balance for eighteen thousand and then our encumbrance control account for those in estimated expenditures expenditures for that carryover amount here debited for eighteen thousand okay 
now let's just say we issued some purchase orders here for the year here. We ordered those $18,000 of reinstated purchase orders plus 70,000 here of new uh, inventory that we're going to purchase. So we're going to uh, total purchase a total amount here of $88,000 worth of inventory. So we set for when we, the POs here are issued, we have to set aside in our encumbrance control debit it here for $18,000 for those uh, it, carryover purchase orders that we're going to issue plus $70,000 worth of new purchase orders. Along with that debit here, then we have to have our fund balance reserved for encumbrances for those purchase orders. We have to credit that or increase it here by $18,000 and also the $70,000 amount. So you see what's going on with this encumbrance control for the estimated expenditures, the estimated cost. That's a contra account to the unreserved fund balance here. That's really a set aside for any of these. It, it reduces whatever unreserved fund balance is at the time here. It re reduces it here by a debit here to encumbrance control here is essentially a debit increase here. It would be a debit minus or a reduction here to our unreserved fund balance. Okay, so we've order, ordered those materials here through those uh, $88,000 worth of purchase orders. Now it comes along and we actually received the POs here, received the purchase orders are received. So what we would do, we no longer need our encumbrance control here. So we would credit it and reduce it here by the, the estimated cost, the original estimates here for $88,000. So we take our encumbrance control reduce it or credit it here for 88,000. And then we no longer need this fund balance reserve for those encumbrances. We would debit it here for $88,000. So just remember here, once you, the POs are received, no longer needing the encumbrance control, but you remove it off, you list it here at the estimated cost. Remember, it's always the estimated cost and you remove it at the estimated cost. Now, um, since we received this material here, we're going to set it up on a payable here. We're going to call it vouchers payable as our liability account. We're not going to directly pay for it right now. So we'll just set it up as a credit here of $87,000. Remember, we had the purchase orders outstanding for $88,000. That was the estimated cost. But now when we set up our payable here, it's got to be at the actual cost. And we'll just, for example, say our actual cost here was $87,000. Okay, so easy enough. We set up our liability here. Just remember, the liability or a payable has to be based on the actual cost of those purchase orders. So we were sent a bill here, an actual bill for $87,000. We originally estimated that bill to be $88,000. Okay, so just remember, uh, estimated cost for the encumbrance, encumbrance system here, actual cost when you set up your payable. Okay, so we credited or increased our payable here by $87,000, and now we're going to take that amount here and we're going to increase our inventory supplies here by the amount here of 87,000. We bought it on credit or as a liability of payable here, but nonetheless, we're increasing our inventory supplies here by $87,000. $87, now comes along the end of the year here, and we have to if, determine what our inventory expense would be for the year here. So just looking at, just say, for example, we don't know what our expense is. We have to calculate it here. So we know what our beginning balance is. That's 31000 We know what we purchased for the period here, 87000 And we know what our ending amount is for at 30, 35000 We did a physical count. We determined we got $35,000 worth of inventory sitting on hand. So taking our beginning balance here, 31000 plus our purchases of 87,000 minus our ending inventory of 35,000 is going to give us 83,000 here for inventory that we used for the year here. So credit, reduce your inventory supplies here by the 83,000. Ending inventory is debit here by 435,000. Okay, so uh, our credit here, a reduction in inventory supplies of 83,000, we calculated that. That gets recorded as our expenditures control our inventory expense for the period here. Debit that here for $83,000. Okay, so what we did here is we're going to, we've determined what our inventory used is here. We determined what our inventory expense is based on what our inventory used is, but we have to make some 
uh, reserve adjustments for our inventory that we are ending inventory versus our beginning inventory. We're going to have to do some adjustments. So this is where we're going to move up here and we're going to be looking at our fund balance reserve for inventory. So this is where we're going to have to set this fund balance up here, this reserve fund balance to match our inventories. And uh, what, how we would do that here is we're going to, our beginning amount here is 31,000. We knew that was our beginning set aside here for 31,000. That was based on our beginning inventory here. And I, we know what our ending inventory is. We knew that we calculated that to be 35,000. So we can go back down here, you look at our inventory supplies account here. 31,000 beginning balance, ending inventory here, 30, 35,000. So to, for our adjustment, well, it's easy enough to calculate. We need to increase our fund balance reserved here by $4,000 to get from our beginning balance of 31,000 to our ending balance here of 35,000. Simply uh, our, to match our inventory with our this setting up this fund balance, be ending inventory here was 35,000, beginning 31,000, so that gives us the 4,000 here. Fund balance reserved for inventories. Now, along with this credit here or increase in our fund balance reserve for inventories, we're going to also need to go up to our unreserved fund balance here, undesignated fund balance, and we have to set aside $4,000 for that uh, matching that inventory, that increase in inventory from the beginning to the end of the year here for $4,000. So debit or increase our unreserved fund balance here by $4,000. Okay, so you can see what was going on here. We have to, when we set up our encumbrance, uh, we issued some POs here, we have to set up our encumbrances control account, and then we have to set aside fund, uh, fund balance reserve for those encumbrances or those POs here. When the POs were received, then we could remove our encumbrances or reduce our encumbrances and also reduce our fund reserve balance. So that's this is dealing with those fund reserve balance. So we had one uh, fund reserve balance going on for our encumbrances or our purchases here. And then we have to also have this second fund balance reserved in this case for our inventories. And that's what we have to have set up here for our setting aside our inventories, whatever is sitting in inventories here. So we have to set up that account here. And then uh, tied into our fund balance reserve for our inventories, we had to have set this unreserved fund balance undesignated fund balance, we had to make, make some reduction. In, in this case, we had to uh, set aside some monies based on our fund balance reserves for our inventories. Okay, so let's go back and let's go over and just look at it side by side here. Okay, just to go over it again here, just looking at, again, this unreserved fund balance, undesignated fund balance here, and we'll compare that to our fund balance reserve for our inventories that we looked at here, and then our inventory supplies. Just to look by a side-by-side -side example here. So let's start with our inventory supplies and see. Okay, we had a beginning amount here of 31,000, purchases here of 87,000, and then we used 83,000, so we had an ending amount here of $35,000 in inventory. So our fund balance reserve. You can see the beginning amount here, 31,000. Ending amount here, ending inventory here, 35,000. So we had to increase it here by $4,000. To match, our a fund balance reserved here has to match our inventory account, at least from the beginning, the beginning balance to what we had in the ending balance in our inventories. Along with this fund balance reserve here for our inventories, because we had this increase here in $4,000 in our reserved here for the inventories here, we also have to have a reduction to the unreserved fund balance, undesignated fund balance here by $4,000. So we have to, based on our fund balance reserve for inventories, we have to set aside or reduce our unreserved fund balances by $4,000. And along with that, I've just showed the beginning amount here. You can see because we had a fund balance reserve here for inventory as a creditor increase here, 31,000, we have to have a debit or reduction here in the unreserved fund balance because it's because it's actually being reserved here. It's no longer an unreserved fund balance. The beginning amount here are $31,000. So you can see the, well, you can see that we have the 31,000 here uh, unreserved for the beginning fund balance reserved here for inventories, the beginning amount here, and then we also have the unreserved fund balance here for the ending of that adjustment that we had to make here for the ending inventory here at $4,000.
So nonetheless, in our unreserved fund balance, we got 31,000 here, plus 4,000 gives us 35,000, 18,000 canceled out here. And then our fund balance reserve for our inventories here, uh, total amount 31,000 plus 4,000, total 35,000. So that we had credited here and we had the debit or the reduction here, unreserved fund balance. It's no longer unreserved here because of the fund balance reserve for the inventories. And then you can just see our inventory supplies here, 31,000 in the beginning, 35,000 here at the end. So everything matches up. You had to have uh, this reserve, un fund balance reserve for inventories has to match our inventory. And you can see how we did that. Okay, so that'll take care of our example here for governmental accounting for inventories. But uh, I've gone through the inventory example here, but it could be for other accounts here where you can't convert them into cash and you have to set up a special fund balance reserve for whatever item you're looking at. So we, we looked at inventories in this case and how, how we had to set aside and, uh, encumbrance, setting up the encumbrance control here for those inventories, as, re, as well as setting aside those fund balance reserves for those inventories. Okay, so that'll uh, summarize our topic.